Initial response to FTX at the time is no, because they're an unregulated crypto exchange and I don't feel comfortable sponsoring anything that's unregulated. Okay, people, so I made a video six days ago about FTX and YouTubers promoting FTX. Doing research into that video, I did watch quite a few different videos about this whole thing and YouTubers and being paid by FTX and what's going on. And I get so many suggested videos now about this subject and I've been seeing a bunch lately with this guy. Now this is Joseph Carlson and I'm sure a lot of you actually know who he is because according to my YouTube analytics, a lot of you actually watch his channel. And he's actually a pretty big YouTuber, 255,000 subscribers. He has another channel called Joseph Carlson After Hours. It's got around 60 something thousand subscribers. So guy's got a legit amount of subscribers. And the thing is with Joseph Carlson, I think that he is actually a pretty transparent YouTuber. I think he's actually does a really good job and I think he preaches diversification not investing in very, very risky stocks or cryptocurrency at all. And so I wanted to tell you today why I don't think he is actually at fault, like some of the other YouTubers I was talking about in the other video, which I think did a poor job with this whole FTX thing. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, meet Sam Bankman Freed. He is the guy who started FTX. He's the guy who's basically in charge of bailing out a lot of different cryptocurrency companies over the summer. Now over the summer, Sam Bankman Freed was actually looked at like this herald, this guy who came in, he's like a Warren Buffett of cryptocurrency. He came in and he was supposedly the guy who was saving crypto over the summer. He saved companies like BlockFi, Voyager, right? He gave them lines of credit. He helped them survive and not go, let's say bankrupt and contagion spraying throughout cryptocurrency world. It turns out, unfortunately, that he ended up using a lot of customers' funds to do these bailouts and mixed a lot of things with his other arm called Alameda Research and it gets really complicated, but essentially he used clients assets that were within the cryptocurrency part of FTX to bail out and send it to other places that he definitely should not have. Now to understand why I think Joseph Carlson's been redeemed, why his name's been cleared, in my view, we have to go and take a look at FTX's organizational structure. So we have the organizational structure of FTX and as you can see, it's almost incomprehensible. It's, it's basically, it's a web of madness basically. But what we want to do is we want to take a look here at first. All this stuff in like purple are basically the subsidiaries and affiliates listed in 27 locations. So like you have FTX in uh, let's say UAE, Nigeria, Japan, Antigua. You have all these like international, and by the way, FTX was a Bahamian company, which you know goes to say a lot because it's not even a US company, even though you know the guy's from the US and he worked in the US for a long time and he had to go out and register his company inside the Bahamas because US regulators, of course, aren't gonna give him a lot of leeway, essentially, with the type of company he's running. So what he does is, he, this is all like international parts of FTX. Well, there's also parts that were essentially US. So there's FTX US. And the FTX US is actually West Realm Shires Inc. And this is the part where I wanna to focus today because this is where I think Joseph Carlson was completely right in what he did and his approach to when he was promoting FTX. So right here, you're gonna see a little thing that says West Realm Shire Services Inc. DBA FTX US. And so basically West Realm Shires Inc. is doing business as FTX US and FTX US, anyone that went and invested inside from the United States that went out and invested, they were investing in FTX US. So everyone who promoted this, so Andre Jick, Graham Stephan, uh, just Carlson, they were all basically promoting FTX US. They weren't promoting FTX, that general giant company that I showed you before that has parts in all over the world, essentially. FTX Japan, right, for example. So this is where it falls under the organizational structure. Now let's take a look at this another way. This is a kind of like spread out in a different way that we're looking at it. And this is on the left side where we're talking about West Realm Shires Inc, of course. And this is like the, all the other parts of this thing. Let's just zoom in on this area here on the left side. Again, we have West Realm Shires Inc here, and this kind of shows us a little easier way to see something that I want you to understand here. And this is West Realm Shires Financial Services Inc. It's a Delaware incorporated company. And then we have FTX Capital Markets LLC. And FTX Capital Markets LLC is the broker dealer of FTX. If you went and you bought stocks through FTX US, you went through FTX Capital Markets LLC. And you're probably saying to yourself, Robbie, well, who cares about that? What does this even have to do with anything? So let's talk about regulation. Regulatory overview in our markets in the US, we have Congress, we have Securities and Exchange Commission. 
we have the Financial Industry Regulation Authority, that's FINRA, okay? FINRA, what does FINRA do? It regulates broker dealers and registered reps. Like, so I just said, when we're talking about FTX capital markets, we're talking about a regulated broker dealer. And when we're talking about FTX US that's investing in cryptocurrencies, we are not talking about a, regula a regulated broker dealer. And let me show you what Robinhood says in their the difference between their part that is like a regulated broker dealer where you can buy securities with Robinhood and the part where you would buy crypto. Now this is from Robinhood, right? So it says RHC here, RHC, it's an affiliated entity and wholly owned subsidiary of Robinhood's markets. Then you have cryptocurrencies held in RHC accounts are not covered by FDIC or SIPC protections and they're not regulated by FINRA. So basically cryptocurrencies they're not gonna be regulated by FINRA. They're not gonna be regulated, they're not gonna have SIPC insurance, okay? And so when we talk about Joseph Carlson, we now need to talk about something that he said. So this is a apology essentially from Joseph Carlson and acknowledging that he did promote FTX and what he did, he's sorry for, he wished that he didn't do it. But the thing is, by the way, this is so much better than for example, like Andre Jick did, who basically said, hey, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, who cares, right? This guy, he really did put some skin in the game and just listen to what he says. This time by FTX US. My initial response to FTX at the time is no, because they're an unregulated crypto exchange and I don't feel comfortable sponsoring anything that's unregulated. But they tell me that they're launching a new product. This new product is a US regulated stock brokerage. It's a member of FINRA and SIPC. See, this is what really caught my interest. This wasn't a crypto exchange that was unregulated. This was a new company that was a US regulated stock brokerage. Okay, so he is 100% right. He's 100% right. He did, I think, everything that I said in the video I made about the YouTube influencers who promote FTX and how they probably should have made sure that they at least told their viewers that it does not have SIPC insurance. It is not regulated by the FDIC, right? All of those things that they should have done, they didn't do. But Joseph Carlson, he wasn't even promoting the cryptocurrency part of FTX. He was only talking about investing in the stock market. Now, this is actually kind of like for me on this channel, I talk sometimes about how I like M1 Finance. I talk like how I like Robinhood, right? And so I talk about brokers sometimes that also have arms that you can get cryptocurrency for. I've never talked about buying cryptocurrency in this channel. I don't really believe in cryptocurrency, but there are people who may watch my videos and may say, well, you promote Robinhood, which has cryptocurrency. I'm not talking about crypto on this channel. I'm talking only about stocks. So I maybe I need to do a better job in talking and discussing about what I usually talk about here. Now, I've showed this before, but this is how I allocate money into the market. And so basically I only invest in stocks. This is all stocks. This is all stocks. This is gonna be ETFs. This is gonna be miscellaneous strategies that always are gonna have ETFs or stocks. And this is cash and I only use these different brokers and they're all SIPC insured. They all have FINRA oversight, right? Now, remember, Robinhood and M1 Finance, they offer some crypto and those don't have that oversight, okay? But I'm not talking about crypto on this channel. I'm just talking about investing in stocks. So let's watch a video where Joseph Carlson actually promoted FTX. This was on July 20th. Now, before we move on, I have to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor of this video, which is FTX US. They're a very large cryptocurrency exchange and most people now remember first he says ftx us right so he's not talking about ftx the unregulated broker that you know has subsidiaries in for example japan and all over the world right he's talking about ftx us People are aware that you can buy and sell crypto on ftx for lower fees than most of their competitors what they aren't aware of is that ftx is moving into different verticals and this is something exciting for me because i'm not big into cryptocurrencies i don't own any of them i like things that i can do fundamental valuation on so he, he right off the bat tells you that he's not into cryptocurrency. He doesn't own cri cryptocurrency. He doesn't invest in it. He likes to see things that he can do fundamental analysis on, like stock. I can look at the cash flows the thing is going to produce. And with stocks, you can do that. This is currently in beta, but they are opening it up to wider access every single week. So you will get access to this eventually. The stock platform is free. The trades on it are free. You can do fractional shares. You can buy and sell anytime the market's open. The interface is very simple. And the brokerage, the stock portion of this is FINRA and SIPC insured. So there you go. He really actually inside the video where he is promoting FTX, he goes so much further than pretty much any other YouTuber I've seen so far. He actually talks about that it is, there's an oversight from FINRA 
and that it's SIPC insured. And I haven't even heard anyone talk about that when they talked about FTX. I've never heard anyone talk about the stock portion of FTX and not the cryptocurrency part of it. I'm just gonna say that I think this guy did everything right in his promotion of this company, of this product. And I don't think that he deserves to be lumped in with some of these other people, for example, like Andre and the Millennial Money people. I don't see how this should be seen as something similar to what they did because I didn't really see any videos where they went and said anything about SIPC, FDIC. They were really like, you can buy crypto on this exchange, right? And so what they did probably was, I think, not maliciously try to mislead people or anything like that. I don't think that that's what they were doing, but I don't think that they did a good job saying the risks that were inherent in something like this. There is no oversight that's, o that's overseeing these accounts. No one was overseeing Sam Bakeman fried He had pretty much no oversight, but he had oversight in the broker dealer that they owned. What we're looking at here is the bankruptcy proceedings of FTX. As you can see, there's 134 companies associated with FTX that are filing for bankruptcy. If we go back, we have FTX Capital Markets, LLC. That's the broker dealer, right? Guess what is mentioned in the bankruptcy proceeding? Everything with an X is literally written inside the bankruptcy proceeding and FTX Capital Markets LLC is not. I don't know what to make of it, but all I know is it's not specifically listed inside the bankruptcy proceeding. It leads me to believe that they're not part of the bankruptcy. Now let's take a look at a video with Joseph Carlson and the CEO of M1 Finance. I, again, I don't have as much understanding of the regulations, but I at least every time I see something, I feel better about knowing it's more regulated. Um, with crypto and stuff, part of the appeal is like less regulations and it's kind of the wild west. Um, but what I've seen over the past week, you know, I, I took on a uh, sponsorship to advertise FTX US's uh, stock brokerage, which is a platform based out of the US, a stock broker. And what I've seen since the whole company collapsed because the international business went under, uh, it dragged down the rest of it, including the US businesses, the people that used the regulated stock brokerage, the company that was actually licensed in the US with the regulations have already received their money back. They've given instructions on how to log in. You can go in and get your money back. I actually had $2,000 on the platform and I retrieved it and a, a few other people. So when I was looking at this, I was actually concerned um, You know, a few days ago. I was thinking, if I can't get my money back on this and this is regulated, right, the, the US stock platform, that was gonna be something that was really concerning. But I, I actually saw the process work out a little bit, which was interesting to see. And so this is what I actually don't understand. I don't understand why the story right now isn't that there was this part of FTX that freaking went bankrupt because it was throwing people's money in and buying different cryptocurrency companies that were going under and shouldn't have been doing. It shouldn't be that just FTX did this and it was terrible. It's that the regulated part of FTX ended up being okay. What, why is that not an amazing story? Because to me, that shows me how much more confident I am investing in just stocks with regulated broker dealers. And the fact that regulations, actually, they kind of do help. And where people who are so into cryptocurrency and hate regulations, I don't think that they really care about what's going on with this part. And they don't want you to probably hear about it, right? Because they don't want crypto to be regulated. At the end of the day, I think Joseph Carlson probably did everything right. And I think that he should be vindicated. And I think I'm on his side on this thing. So anyway, I would love to hear what you have to think in the comments below. I know that you all probably have your own opinion on this. So let me know down there. Hit that like button, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Got a disclaimer here and see you next time.